All right. Welcome back, everybody. It is live from the living room. Uh, this show has changed its name three times in three days, but I feel like we're getting closer, so stick with me. Uh, this was going to be a live LinkedIn show uh, every uh, week from my studio, but then uh, the world changed, uh, and so now we're doing it every day. From my- we seem to be back, so here we go. All right. My <laughs> internet sucks. Thank you, Verizon. Killing the game. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and bring everybody in here. Um, all right. First things first, let's introduce Travis. I'm going to bring you in right now. Okay. Boom. All right. Travis, how you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I apologize for the technical difficulties, but we'll, we'll get it together here eventually. This is what happens when you do a live broadcast, I suppose. So, um, Travis, tell us who you are, introduce yourself, let everybody know who you are. Sure thing. I'm Travis Vengroff. I'm from Portland, Oregon. I am a sound designer, producer, uh, editor, creator of a bunch of fiction podcasts like The White Vault, Vast Horizon, Dark Dice. Um, So I'm a full-time entertainer of audio stories that come out every two weeks. My wife writes them. I produce them. We're a two-person team. That's her full-time job. We're supported completely by our fans through Patreon. Uh, I also have a, a somewhat of an educational component of my life. I'm a member of the Audio Drama Hub, the Audio Drama Roundtable, the Audio Drama Coalition, the uh, International Academy of Digital Arts and Sciences. I'm an associate member of them. Uh, basically, my my other theory besides uh, entertainment is education and helping others to uh, create their own fiction stories or even nonfiction stories using some of the tactics and tricks that uh, us fiction folk use. That's amazing. That's Thank really you. awesome. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that you and your wife are this team. That's uh that's really smart. That's yeah, really we, smart. we lucked out. <laughs> Honestly, like um <laughs> we've won some awards recently and uh I guess people really like our shows and we're in like the top one percent, but it wasn't always wow. that way. But we've been doing it for five years and we've just sort sort of kept at it and uh, haven't missed a week or ever, haven't missed an a, a second week, I should say, because every other week, but uh, Right. If you keep at it and you get better as time goes on, eventually you can maybe get somewhere. So that's pretty cool. That's amazing. And I love that you're uh, utilizing Patreon and doing well with that. That is awesome. That is super awesome. And uh, entirely unexpected as well. <laughs> like our fans just sort of caught us and uh, took us away from our, our jobs. And now this is our full time thing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, I would love to collaborate with you on some stuff. I do. Uh, I teach a lot of podcast classes and I have an online course and stuff like that. And one of the things I talk about is Patreon and how to market and how to be consistent. So we'll have to talk offline about how we can collaborate and maybe teach a class together or do something. Cause I've got a pretty big network that, uh, of people that I'm sure would love to gain some of your knowledge for sure. Happily, happily. Awesome, man. Awesome. All right. So next we will bring in Jade. How you doing, Jade? I'm good. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Glad to be ab- here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you tell everybody uh, who you are, introduce yourself, what you do? So my core work is as a leadership trainer. And essentially what I mostly do is I train people to deal with difficulty and chaos uh, it, mostly in day-to-day situations, this is a, a different level of it, and uh, and sure. I, actually how to how to um, adjust their own nervous system to impact their downline employees and and systems so that they have a a mindful wellness base to start from when making decisions out of curiosity. So um, it sounds more complicated than it is, but it's it's my love and my background is from. Um, holistic medicine, acupuncture. So my family started um, graduate degrees, schools in healing arts and transformative leadership and social change years ago. Mm -hmm. So my background is sort of at the intersection of holistic medicine and leadership. That's amazing. That's awesome. I want to connect you with somebody after the show um, who does uh, yoga therapy and sound healing. Uh, specifically aimed at C-level executives because her idea is if she can help them get to a better uh, place mentally, that that impacts a whole lot of people because they're making decisions that impact all of us every day. Um, So it seems like you guys could probably um, collaborate or who knows. I can definitely connect her with people in that world. Um, That's, yeah. 
That's awesome. And she's like uh, got like 30 years or 25 years experience and degrees and all of that. So she's she's legitimate. She worked at Walter Reed for a year working with soldiers and stuff. So I may know her already. <laughs> yeah, you, you might. actually. Her name is Sarah Shane. Do you know Sarah Shane? Uh, it doesn't sound familiar, actually. OK, but, well, yeah. I'll definitely connect you. I think yeah. there's some synergy there for sure. Yeah. So let's let's that is not what I want to use. So oh, Travis, Melissa's back. Me, what's that? Melissa's back. Melissa's back. There, she was for a second. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now she's gone completely. No. Oh, man. Oh. She'll figure it out. Maybe she's having the same internet issues that I'm having. There we go. Melissa, are you back? But, um, well, first and foremost, thank you both uh, all and Melissa's uh, former. Uh, <laughs> well, I think she's coming in. Um, but thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking time to jump in on this conversation and kind of talk about everything that's going on. And, you know, I'm curious to know, you know, what are you two doing in order to like maintain all of this? You know, how are you managing this? How are you, are you, you know, are your businesses suffering? You know, how can we help? How can we kind of impact things and just what's going on, you know? Sure thing. Uh, Jay, do you want to take it first or should I? Go for it. All right. So we have an interesting uh, model. We're seasonal. So if you can imagine a big network television show where they have like different shows that go on in different seasons, one after the other, we only have the ability to produce one show at a time, essentially. So we are producing one show in its full season and then we immediately jump to the next show. But those audiences are not always the same. Uh, and sorry, I'm working from home so you can hear my dog. <laughs> uh, but the audiences aren't always the same. So some of them will drop off when uh, one show uh, ends and we'll get new people when the next show starts. Mm. So we're experiencing uh, the end of our largest show, but we're, we've done this crazy thing where we have bonus content on our Patreon that we're about to start releasing for that show. So it's keeping people still engaged uh, while at the same time making more stuff with our other new stories. And uh, we, we've started a thing called Operation Entertainment, where we're literally just trying to get as much stuff as possible during this uh, kind of chaotic time for people because there needs to be more things to distract and entertain. So that's what we're really endeavoring to do, um, working far too hard, but having way too much fun doing it. Well, that's awesome. That's reassuring to hear because it's, um, it's not the case for everybody, right? So that's, that's awesome. Uh, what kind? Yeah, I mean, I guess you're in a great position because if you and your wife already are working from home, this is like this is just another day uh, for you guys as far as your routine. I mean, kind of, right? Oh, effectively, we're the only thing is we can't. Um, I guess we used to have friends that we met with once every couple of weeks, but we can't see them now. <laughs> <laughs> you climb out of the cave and search for sunlight. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely difficult not being able to socialize and stuff that really, um, sucks right now for sure. But at least we have things like, you know, what we're doing right now and zoom and stuff like that to at least see other people's faces and actually interact with people. It definitely helps. My family actually did a call. Uh, we did a, a family zoom call. It's another app like Skype. And we yeah. had all of the cousins of my generation. So like, uh, 12 people in different parts of the country all on a call for about an hour. It was fun. That's awesome. And see, you know, this stuff wouldn't be happening if we weren't in this position, right? I think it's this like unexpected blessing is like this, new, like, even though we're all disconnected, I think we're more connected in our own strange way. I think we've kind of leveled the playing field a little bit. Right on. All right, Jade, how about you? How are you uh, managing? I know you've been very active on social media, which is why, you know, I wanted to reach out to you because I see that you're just like constantly posting stuff, positive stuff, resources. You know, how are you kind of maintaining through all of this? You know, I, I think I was um, surprisingly well situated. I, I carry a chaos pendulum around with me when I teach. So I'm really familiar with helping other people understand that life is full of chaos and you can't control change. And um, so looking at it from that perspective is something that I already have been training people to do and I've been practicing myself for many, many years. So in that regard, it's great. And because I am so tapped into, you know, I'm in groups with thousands and thousands of practitioners all over the world. Um, and so I had colleagues who were in China on the ground when this started to happen. Um, and they were under quarantine. So I've been tracking it. And so I was kind of a little bit ahead of the game. 
um, which was great because that also meant that I had sort of done my own. It's tricky because I have to calibrate then how do I do the communications with other people to help them get on board. It's like I have to calibrate when people are going to be ready to hear different parts of the messaging. Because mm -hmm. a big part of what I do for companies is the communications. How do you talk to people to help them kind of get on board with various things that you need to have them be a synchronized um, piece. But so for me, you know, I, I, luckily, I think also a lot of my work, I moved online a few years ago. I'm grateful, so grateful right now. I used to have like a 5,000 square foot wellness center with a big training space for leadership programs. And um, I'm really, really grateful right now that I don't have that with 20 people to, you know, to manage or to lay off or to, you know, figure out what to do with right now. So, um, you know, as I've been working with other people who are having to navigate those kind of decisions. So um, I've been staying busy in a, in a, you know, good ways. Um, although sometimes it's funny because it's not all, it's not all paid business. And there's a group of people who are needing some support right now that I sort of shifted my attention to from my main work. So I have thousands of acupuncturists who, it, depending on where they are, feel like they're kind of suddenly out of work and aren't haven't done telemedicine in the past. Don't really know what how they would do that without using needles. Um, mm -hmm. But I've been doing that essentially in a lot of the leadership work at, in a in a way um, for a long time, and I've been training other people to do it for the past couple of years. So. Uh, so it's it's great that I have some ability to help people do that, and it means between that and people are starting to come down with symptomatology, so people are reaching out to me directly for that kind of support as well. Um, I closed my I had a small acupuncture practice left, so I closed that about a month ago, um, which does give me a little bit of a hit financially, um, you know, uh, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, gratefully it wasn't my only source of income, and it wasn't even my main one at the moment. Leadership is also, I'm not getting new business right now, partially because I'm not tapped in enough for them to see me as a, a chaos and change management agent, um, which I definitely feel like I can be helping people with. So there's a part of me that would love to be able to support people more that way. Um, yeah, for sure. You have to make decisions quickly on the fly, what kind of rubrics they can use to kind of quickly and effectively communicate. I've been tracking which companies are doing a great job of communicating with employees and, and you know, clients and, and all the rest of that and seeing who's doing what and who's got really corporate their finger on the pulse of corporate responsibility, which I think is going to be huge for the resiliency of different things right now. But yeah, you know, that's awesome. A lot I of mean, people are cutting a lock of a draw with this, really. You know, if you were in certain industries, you get hit hard, harder or less hard and, um, you know, and others just need to be able to like get over the shock quickly enough to be able to see what else, how else they can help and be of service right now so that they can actually bounce back some quickly and or at least still be afloat at the end of it. For sure. I think yeah. um, all of that is yeah. just so important, you know, to give people some skills. I think that, you know, I don't think things will ever get back to normal, but like things will get back, right? It'll be our new normal. Like, you know, I was thinking about it, you know, you know, we, when we go on bike rides and stuff, or when I, I say we, but just me, uh, going on bike rides. And I just think like, you know, I have so much life in me, right? Like what, you know, and there will be some fatalities here, but like, we're still alive and like our economy might tank. Right. But like life will, the sun is still going to get up, right. The sun's still going to shine in the morning. And at some point, all of this will level out. And then it's like, well, what now, what do we do? Right. And if we've all just sort of had our head in the sand for however long, um then the the cold hey melissa's back hey, i'm sorry i just i think maybe it was my internet connection in that in the studio because it's um it's just a slower connection so i just couldn't get back on <laughs> yeah well your feed looks much better now so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna switch the camera over to you so you can introduce yourself hey so tell us who you are Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Melissa Henry. I'm the CEO of Melissa Dental Photography in Washington, D.C. And I am a brand photographer, but what I do is I help speakers and authors and entrepreneurs um, create branded images for themselves so that they can connect better with their target audience. Um, 
I do that not just through photography, but also through strategy. So I help them if they're not really having like a very good, deep understanding of their personal brand. I help them kind of dig a little deeper so we can pull out all of those emotions, all of those ways to um, tell their story and really, truly connect with people. Um, because especially even now, <laughs> um, nobody can, that, can get out and meet people face to face. So it's even more important to really, you know, connect with people on that emotional level through imagery, video like we're doing here um, and all of that. For sure. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and I'm glad you came back. I yeah, like, better late than never, huh? That's right. <laughs> we're just getting warmed up anyway. So oh, we're, good. Okay. That's right. Jade Vassano, she does a lot of work with leadership and corporate responsibility. I, I think I'm going to paraphrase this in a way that doesn't give it nearly as much credit, but she's working really uh, closely with people that make decisions to make sure they're making healthy decisions for everybody. Uh, awesome. And, uh, and so much more, really. I'm really, I, I want to talk to you to more about all that stuff, Jade, because I'm a big fan. I was born with a, a rare congenital birth defect and I wasn't supposed to live more than 20 years. And so I've had a lot of spinal surgeries uh, and I spend a good amount of time in pain, uh, but manageable. So don't feel bad for me. Uh, but I'm definitely a big fan of acupuncture and, uh, you know, all of those other things. I'm a huge fan uh, after spending many years where they were trying to, you know, my issues started so young. So they accused me of being a drug seeker when I was 19, 20. Uh, you know, because they couldn't believe that I would have such a damaged spine and they thought I was making it up. Uh, then as I got older, they would just give me drugs, you know, and so it was just like, and, and I never wanted the drugs. I was like, just give me an MRI, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want your drugs. Uh, <laughs> and so I definitely got hip to all the other opportunities like meditation and acupuncture and just mindset is a big one. Um, yes it makes a huge difference. Yeah, for sure. So right on. So what, this is a really interesting mashup of people here. I love it. You know what? So we were Can just I talking for a sec with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I just want to say that I think this is an amazing moment for us as, as a group of humanity across the board to realize how much of our medicine, well, a is upside down. Um, <laughs> And B, how much of it, though, is more um, it's in our own hands than we ever realized before. And we're going to have to learn that in the next few weeks pretty quickly, mm -hmm. which I think is actually a really wonderful kind of exciting side development of um, somewhat deprofessionalizing a lot of things that have been over-medicalized or confused medically. Um, and some of those things, are, I think we're going to get a chance to reset uh, a little bit. So Yeah, well, um, certainly people are, are Googling the, like crazy trying to find, you know, remedies and, and like trying all these different like herbal remedies and all this stuff. I mean, it's nuts. The people are opening their minds to different possibilities. For sure. For sure. You know, so Melissa, we were just talking about, um, you know, how all of this is impacting business. And so I'm curious to know, like, how has this impacted your world and what you have going on and your business and everything else? And kind of what are you doing to hmm. adjust to that? Yeah, it is. I mean, I can't get out to photograph people. It's just it's that simple. Um, but I mean, because a large part of what I do with my clients have, is more about strategy and more about, you know, um, really looking at what their brand is visually. I've, I've been like at the last pat, like week or two, I've been trying to figure out, okay, how do I still serve people? Like, what is it that, what's my skill set? How do I still do that? And I feel like um, this, well, on the one hand, it's going to be difficult because it's kind of like, I can't, I can't really help them get, a, get better photos right now. But what I can do is kind of like, look at what they have already. I can help them, maybe even help them uh, learn how to take some photos on their own, mm -hmm. like with their family or whomever they're with, explain lighting, explain composition you know, give them good creative ideas, that sort of thing. So I felt like, okay, maybe the next step really is kind of um, being a consultant in that way. <clears throat> Excuse me, being, being a consultant so that I just basically sit with them and say, okay, let's let's do a strategy for you. Let's figure out like, what, what are you going to be doing? Are you going to be like, you know, creating an online course with Molly? Um, 
<clears throat> and yay. And or are you going to be, um, I don't know, trying to grow your email list? So you need to do lead pages, that sort of thing. Maybe you need to look at your website and does it really represent you anymore? Because, you know, everyone's brand, um, you know, there's a, it's a brand journey. Like you don't stop <laughs> in one place. So let's let's look at all of those assets that you have. Let's talk about how we make them better. Let's talk about how they, we tighten things up. So I think that that's going to be the next step for me. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've got a frog today. I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I think that's the next step. But it's um, the challenge is, okay, that's not what I've been offering. So now I've got to, like, create my own assets around that. I got to get that messaging tight. And I got to, like, start, you know, start socializing that. So it's really just a, a, okay, whoops, let's throw everything out the window and let's really start like you know, sitting down. And then it's hard too, because I have a, a daughter who's seven and, right. you know, she's home from school. And so in fact, I have no idea if she'll pop in here any minute. So everything is piecemeal. That's the other challenge. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a whole new day. Right. And I think, I think you made a really good point about, you know, branding doesn't stop. Um, you know, even just today, I was like, uh, I put an ad on the, the online class that I'm teaching and I looked at the copy and I was like, this isn't what I want to have on here. And I rewrote everything and we're having to go back yeah. and look at our social media calendar. And I pulled a bunch yeah. of stuff and said like, no, we have to, we have to change. And, you know, I, you know, kind of retooled one of the teammates to say like, we have to, you know, I don't want to sound like we're selling anything. I, I want our content to sound like it's me talking like, yo, mm -hmm. what's up? like I know mm -hmm. you're having a hard day. Like, this is why I'm doing this kind of thing and forget all the like, this is the hottest. Like, nope, 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 nope. You know? Well, you know what, though? I think that makes it more real anyway. I mean, we all should be writing that way. All, all like who we are really. For sure. And, you know, it's crazy because on my own social media, like my personal page, I do that. Yeah, um, but I don't always do that on like the business stuff, which is interesting. It's like there's sort of a, a breakdown there, you know, between mm -hmm. like true authenticity and personality, um, because, you know, if you've met me or seen me speak, then, you know, there's no holding that shit back. You know, like, <laughs> Yes, I love, I love that about you. I am who I am mm -hmm. right all the time, but it doesn't always translate. So that's a really good point. I love that you're empowering people to uh, take better pictures at home, you know, like mm -hmm. Travis, have you seen any like uptick in interest or have you, have you considered teaching any like audio engineer classes or anything like that? Or, or, or are you kind of stabilized because of where your income is generated? So there's a couple things happening. Uh, one, there's about a 10 to 15% drop in people listening to podcasts over the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. um, just because of disruption of normal workflow. People listen on their commutes. People mm -hmm. listen when they're doing dishes. People listen when they're doing normal everyday activities. Those activities are currently on disruption because people are engaging in new hobbies. So uh, on the education side, there's a huge uptick in new shows that are being created right now. People are making their dream fiction podcast, their dream nonfiction podcast. They're looking into resources um, and I've, I've been involved in a couple of, uh, those, the audio, Google that, uh, audio space drama, space round table, um, that cover everything on how to make a podcast from, uh, if you're writing a fiction one to, if you're trying to put together elements in production to editing, to sound design, to music and incorporating music into making your story, even in nonfiction, more engaging, uh, and those are all free resources that we put together over the last year uh, that we've just been pushing people toward because they're, it's not just myself and my wife, it's actually some of the top uh, producers besides us um, that are a part of the community and having more voices getting together and talking about it made it for a very effective education, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. I think we'll see an uptick in people wanting to learn some new skills right now because it's just that it's that time, you know, and people have some some space in their schedules. Right. And it's that yep. providing a little bit of normalcy, you know, um, mm -hmm. I saw um, I'm in a pod and a Facebook group for uh, called just I think it's the Just Busters group, uh, which is like female uh, podcast editors, uh, which is nice because there's like the female podcaster groups and then like there's podcaster groups and then there's female podcaster groups, which is normally I'm not really into like that type of segregation, but it's so <clears throat> necessary in the podcast world because there's so many like white dudes with just really um, like 
a lot of entitlement and like they insist their opinions are right. It's even true. When you're dead wrong. And you're like, listen, man, just because it works for you, like, doesn't make me a liar that it's working differently for me. Right. And so it really makes a difference to have those spaces for women. So I love the fact that there's like a women editor uh, podcast club and they just launched something uh, called the Podcast 101. Po or podcast editing 101 podcast. I don't know. I'm getting it wrong, but basically, um, you apply as a podcast editor, you edit the last week's show, and then the next week they bring you on and you talk about how you edited the podcast, like what software you use, like what filters you use, all of that. And I thought, man, what a cool idea to really show that in action. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's going to generate any money for them per se, right? But it's a super cool idea. Uh, and I think it'll encourage some people to learn how to do some podcast editing because they can see how it's really broken down. Um, I think it's really valuable for people because it is a little bit of a confusing landscape, to say the least. I how did you get started in sound? Did you Did you go to school for it? I wish uh, I got. I went to the school of hard knocks, um, and it was expensive. I, I, I was in a band. Uh, we were trying to make a, a studio album. I didn't understand that, like everyone just sort of sat in their spot and played at the same time. It's actually a process of one instrument at a time, and it assembles and builds this this album. For for most albums, many albums are done that way. Right. So I got to sit there in the studio, and I was watching the drummer did his thing, the guitarist did his thing, the next guitarist did his thing. Then the band broke up the next day. And I didn't have all the tracks. So I basically spent the rest of the summer in the studio uh, with the editor, learning how to edit, trying to make an album with pieces of an album. And that was my first project. That's cool. And then That's from there, really cool. you know, dialogue is the same thing. It, it's actually a little bit easier because it doesn't have to be as perfect as drums or music. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, com yeah, compared to music production, right? Podcasting is much, much easier, right? It, yes and no, because there's so much you have to do with it. Because uh, we, we just produce like 30 minute episodes and they're all scripted and none of the actors uh, meet each other. They all re record remotely by themselves. So I'm hmm. assembling the dialogue takes together from different people who aren't even talking to each other. So it's, it's similar. Uh, and I would say it's the equivalent of putting together like an album every two weeks. Wow. Um, but without having to do... Uh, some of the crazier stuff you would do with an album, but we still put in uh, like 40 plus hours a week, probably closer to 60 to get wow. it on time with what we're doing now. That's crazy. Wow. <clears throat> Who'd have thunk it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of elements. And I'm always, I have a little hand recorder that I take with me everywhere and record sounds. Not so much recently, but uh, I pre-recorded a lot of stuff for the next season and a half of stuff. So as long as I'm able to go Outside, eventually, I should be okay. <laughs> I like your um, windscreen. It looks like Beaker from... Uh, I was going to say, it looks yeah. pretty cool. It, <laughs> like you, you should have like, a little like, smiley oh. face on it or something. Well, eyes. <laughs> Googly eyes, yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, I have a background in music, not music production per se, but music promotion and producing events and working with artists. And we did... Um, a lot of live streaming. So we recorded 85 bands in 11 months and we did hour long live streams, um, which was like an absolute nightmare to be honest, because <laughs> it's really hard to make anything sound good on Facebook. Um, and uh, because they gate everything at like 720p, so no matter how oh, yeah. good your stuff is, and then it'll sound one way in the room, but then you go upstairs in another room and put headphones on and plug into Facebook, and you're like, I can't even hear the vocals, or I can't, I can't hear the bass at all, or you just never know what would fall out. And so we would have a second engineer, we'd have an engineer in a room, you know, mixing the room and in the cans to make sure it sounded good in a room that really was not built to have bands in it, wasn't treated the right way. And then we would have somebody upstairs, another engineer listening to the feed and then a direct line of communication to the engineer in the room to say, like, turn down the hi-hats or like turn up her vocals or like we can't hear the sax. And then oh just God. to make that even more complicated, we recorded 26 go-go bands. Um, and so Jade and Melissa are from the area. You can see by <laughs> their faces right now. Um, but Travis said, Go Go Band is like heavy percussion, heavy mm -hmm. instrumental. So there'll be five vocalists two keyboard players, three percussionists, a bass player, and a guitar player. So 
So, I mean, that production was just like, those were insane. You know, it was <laughs> the hardest things I've ever done for sure. Uh, and we, we would get crazy traction on those. You know, we would get 100,000 views and, you know, 300,000 impressions on things. I mean, it was just insane. So people still showed up and watched. Oh, even though it wasn't perfect. <laughs> And if you look at some of my first broadcasts, they were terrible. Like, I, I, sometimes I think about taking them down because it's like, oh, geez, you know. But if you watched each one, they got better, you know, and you just learned the only way that you're going to get any better at something is just to do it, you know, just do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, always, I mm -hmm. always joke that like the first time you do anything, you're, it'll suck. And then the second time it'll suck less. And then the third time you'll get kind of good at it. And then by the fourth time, you're an industry expert. And people <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> it's, like, you know, it's just like this straight jump, you know? So um, engineering podcast has been a lot different, a lot easier, but I'm also doing more like um, I, my target audience or client bases, uh, businesses, brands, nonprofits, government organizations, think tanks. Um, and so they're not looking for ambient music or like a horse trotting down the lane. You know what I mean? We're, we're not doing But anything. wouldn't it be cool if they were because they would be totally different from everyone else? <laughs> right. The economic policy was like, uh, or the economic, policy, uh, the economic policy institute, if their podcast was like in 1968, when they passed the Fair Credit Reporting Act and like some horn uh, played in the background, that would be amazing. Uh-huh. But, um, <laughs> but I don't think they have the patience for that level of <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. I heard be pretty fun, fun though. Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be it. right if we took some of these like kind of straight up? I mean, they're all like mostly mission based. Like that's not a parameter on who can be my client or anything like that. That just happens to be you know a lot of the content I produce primarily because I'm in DC and mm -hmm. it's podcast media. So like the NRA is not knocking on my door to produce a podcast. You know. <laughs> uh, thank God because I. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to produce that one. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, it's been a lot of really mission based content. And so it's, you know, for me, I focus squarely on the people and their content. I, I have a very basic backdrop. We we don't do a lot of fancy stuff because it's Wait, really we can't use that one that's behind you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> very pretty one. Um, You're going to use mine, though, huh? This that's right. That's weird right. green looking color. OK. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, so for me, it's just more about focusing on the information that they're giving. And so it's kind of like, you know, when, when I look at tiny desk concerts, all the, the stuff on the bookcases just stresses me out. I'm trying to like organize it and I like get distracted by the, I'm like, oh yeah, there's a band playing, you know, I'm just like, oh, put that thing there. Like it drives me insane. So I try to produce content that's just like really straight to the shot. And it's more about the information than anything else. But I think it would be a lot of fun to produce stuff that's more musically inclined and more of a sonic landscape if you will it's one of my favorite words. well you could you could sneak things in so if you're interviewing like a chef you could actually take again i'm going to pull out the little guy with the head or the hair or the beaker or whatever you could take that into the kitchen record some kitchen sounds and put that behind the interview oh yeah Ooh, get really good idea that way it could be fun or, well, you, or know, you know whatever the relevant window is sorry yeah. have you heard have you heard about and this is something that i that uh, a brand strategist that i know had brought up that there's actually um, like sounds that people can use as part of their brand. Yeah, so like audio tag. Yeah. Just those audio tags. Like that could be their audio tag. Right. You know, like if, so each time they go on, there'd be like the kitchen noises in the background and that wouldn't that just bring you right there. Totally. totally. Yeah. That's kind of a new wave. We've created a couple for clients, uh, the audio tags, like we did yeah. for Monique Maley. So oh, cool. her, her pie, and it's just kind of like, do, 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 you know, it's really, yeah. really simple, but uh -huh. that's, that's essentially what an audio tag is. It's an audio mm -hmm. logo. Yes. How cool is that? I, I want one. Jade, yours could be like, um, <laughs> yes, that's good. <laughs> or like a sound bowl. You can't, I'm not going to imitate this. The sound bowl would be cool. That's, that's not we recorded cool. some of those recently, <laughs> actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, neat. That's fun. Yeah, my mom has like a dozen and I tried it. It's it a lot of fun. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I, I, I'm actually like my my little taglines are like you know, um, how to get to mindfulness in the workplace without having to sit and do singing bowls or yoga with your <laughs> head from accounting. Like, yes. I, because the people who come to me are like they don't want that. They want how do I do this and what difference will it make anyway? 
Right. So I'm actually mm-hmm. kind of, I lean away from, oh, despite my background and my, my physical background and my <laughs> personal background, uh, I actually lean like a little off to the side of the uh, sort of meditation and singing bowls end of things. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I feel like it's really hard to translate. Like I was listening to a lot yeah. of like, healing frequencies and stuff. And then my friend was like, you know, that doesn't work if you can't hear the vibration and like the certain like the, the actual hearts and the frequencies. Like it doesn't translate on YouTube, especially not through my mm-hmm. phone. Interesting. Disappointingly, <laughs> it doesn't have the same effect that it's intended to have if you're not like actually in the room. Although Travis, you might be able to engineer that a little better. And I guess it depends on what stereo you're playing it on, right? Yeah. uh, There's a song called Weightless by Macaroni um, Macaroni Party. I forget the name of the band. But if you look up Weightless, it's a song that's scientifically proven to... Mm -hmm. Oh, no. To do what? (laughs) What? what? I know. We're all on the edge of What is it? Uh There's Scott. I'm pretty... Yeah, sorry. You're... uh, we lost Might be you back. for a second. Yes, you said it's scientific, scientifically proven to do what? Uh, it'll actually relax you. It'll lower your the the rate at which your heart beats. It'll yeah. uh, it will relieve stress. Um, it's it, again scientifically backed and proven. Um, it was created in a lab with a couple of musicians and a, a lot of people who were uh, thinking exactly on this topic. And it's replicatable. So that you can do it. It just requires a decent headset yeah. or, <laughs> or speakers. Yeah. There's a playlist of um, of songs that are specifically engineered to do this, and um, and you know, interestingly, at least clinically, the experience of people who use those kinds of um, apps that might have those megahertz things going on in the background, or I don't, I don't know the technology or the sound exactly, but um, and you know, here's the tricky thing, and this is my thing about holistic medicine is whether or not it works, placebo effect is like 30% of everything. And so if you can increase placebo effect by 10%, you've beaten almost every medication on the market. Right. So, I mean, what? It, it, I, yeah, it's, it's amazing. But if you think about it from that space, you know, all you need to do is keep telling people that the app actually does work and it probably will work more. I don't right. know. I'm sort of playing with the concept of it because we regulate our nervous systems based on what we are hearing, but also, Right, so there's the technology of it, which interfaces with the humanity of it, and that's always such an interesting place to be able to see where there's wiggle room. But clinically speaking, people do get a fair amount out of even those apps that aren't, you know, even though they might not translate as well as, say, being in the room with the same bowl where you actually have the physical resonance. Right. And, you know, um, we you don't get the same resonance state in that regard. You still do get some of the effects of it. So I don't know what the technology is of how that works, but right. um, but it's all pretty kind of interesting for you know fringy little science here. But at this point, right, try it if it helps. Yes, just get. keep watching. Absolutely, <laughs> for sure. I do a lot of those. Um, I don't do a lot of the apps, but I have a bunch of videos. There's a YouTube channel called Power Thoughts Meditation Club. Mm-hmm. And they just have a bunch of like, um, and we can put all these links in the description too. We'll have to share these with each other and then I'll add them to the thing. But um, they just have really good like uh, sleep frequencies and healing frequencies for mm-hmm. meditation for sleep. And it's like they're eight hour long videos that you can just like play while you're sleeping. And it's all very like ambient, like very nondescript sounds, but you know, when I'm feeling restless or I'm not being able to sleep well, those definitely help out. You know, I have a little tiny Bose speaker. I like travel with, I literally don't go anywhere, literally even in my own house without this thing. Um, So when I get in the shower, I listen to music. When I wake up, I turn on music. When I'm like cooking, like when I'm not, you know, on a live broadcast, I'm always listening to music. Um, And I'll put this right on top of my head on my, uh, on my bed frame and turn it on really low and sleep with it all night. And I feel like it helps. I feel like mm-hmm. it definitely calms my mind a little bit. And maybe it is, even if it is placebo, I don't care, you know? I actually, um, I w- got hypnotized last week or a week ago, more than a week ago. I don't remember when it was. Yeah. And I've been hypnotized before, but at this moment I was like, I, when it, when it's, when it really hit me, so to speak, 
I was like, I just want to stay here all the time. It felt so good and so relaxed and all of that stuff. And I was like, I just, this is where I want to be like all day long. <laughs> um, and it only lasted for a little while. And I was like, I, and so now I'm like doing more ed meditation essentially because I want to get back there to that place where I was. Can I, can I give you a tip you know? on, how, on, on how to do this? Because this is mm. really a, there's a practical thing that you can do, which is that if you can remember, like take a second and go back to the place. This is where all of this meditation is about like, you know, your favorite beach or whatever it is. But yes. really what you're doing is you're recreating your physiology because your thoughts um, create your physiology. If you think about a lemon, right? Think about how a lemon tastes, right? If you can actually kind of imagine doing it, you're going to get that salivation going. So the same thing yeah. is happening. You're creating hormonal cascades and in your own body when you recreate the moment. So if you can remember, like take a moment and really see if you can get all of your senses kind of back into that space. Mm. Yeah, you know, I actually I actually recorded that session with this with this hypnotherapist. Oh, and I was like, I am gonna replay that because <laughs> I so, think that might, might help. Yeah. So here's here's the trick though, if you want to be able to kind of find that flow space where you can Mm-hmm. keep that with you as you go throughout your days. Um, if you wear a watch, put your watch on the wrong wrist. Mm. Okay. If you don't wear a watch, you know, something uh, elbows to fingertips is the core idea here because it's something you're going to see a lot of times we're all on our computers, you know, you're cooking, you're washing your hands, hopefully. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. So yes. <laughs> you're seeing, you're seeing this part of your body a mm-hmm. lot. So if you change up the structure of it so that something there will just, dis- sort of disrupt your usual thought pattern, mm. right? Paint one fingernail a different color. I don't oh, care cool. if you put a Sharpie mark on the back of your hand, something, mm-hmm. right? So, because what you want to do is disrupt your thought pattern a million times a day. Um, you know, we have 24,000 breaths a day or something like that. So if you did even 1% of those where you got present for a moment and brought yourself back into that space, where you just mm. sort of intentionally go back and remember it, you've bookmarked your body. So you're actually training your body to use that as a baseline. That's really so, cool. Yeah, so that's like simple, simple kind of habit pattern interrupt. It will rewire your brain pattern to be able to do that. So there's that. science behind this. We can talk about that separately. But for right now, the simple thing is take something, put it elbows to fingertips where you will see it and sort of it'll be out of your ordinary right? Yeah. If your ring mm-hmm. fits on a different finger or whatever it is, something out of your ordinary and then use Yeah, it. I'll just, I'll just have my daughter paint one of my fingernails. She'll have a ball. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Two birds with one stone. For That's sure. right. That's really cool. I was going to say that something cool. and I got completely distracted. <laughs> Sorry. Thinking about the... You got to bring yourself back to the moment, Molly. I know, man. <laughs> Where you been? <laughs> Per usual, per usual. Um, so what are you what are you guys gonna do for the next couple of months? What's your game plan? Like where what 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 are we doing? Oh man, I'm gonna go crazy with like getting on podcasts and speaking wherever I can and all that stuff. I mean, you know, that's that's where everyone's gonna be. All eyes on their computers. I agree. Mm-hmm. How about you, Travis? You're just going to batten down the hatches and keep on trucking? Business as usual. Nothing changes for me. I've uh, got a new season of, uh, I, I want to call it a wholesome story, but it's a ghost story. Uh, it's, mm. it's called Liberty the Tower. And it's um, the first episode came out at last Tuesday, and it's going to be one every Tuesday for uh, 10 weeks. And that's that's my foreseeable future. And that's a lot of fun. And then Vast Horizon comes out in May, which is one woman versus the void of space. Can she survive? <laughs> that's awesome. Travis, are your stories uh, good for kids at all? Um, some of them are. Some of them aren't. Uh, we're, we're, we're working on a children's musical. Give me about uh, six months and I'll, I'll have The Boar Night out, which will be a children's story. It's, it's, they've that's got some cool. cursing, I, I would say, and um, oh, okay. oftentimes violence because we write horror a lot of the time. Oh, but yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, we listened to a lot of podcasts, but I think she's getting tired and bored of them. So we were kind of looking for other things. And I mean, she's already like seen every Harry Potter movie there is, except for the very last one. So I think she's she's okay with intense. We just don't want to bring you know introduce the you know the harsh words or whatever. But nightmares. Yeah, night. Well, I don't think she's afraid of much, so that's cool. How old? 
She's seven. Oh, seven. Okay, got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple more years, and then I'd recommend some of our shows, but not, cool. not yet. Okay, we'll wait. I want links. I have a 13-year-old. And she you won't wait. Stories. <laughs> cool. Yes. I, if I could recommend the White Vault, um, that's our international horror fiction podcast. We subvert our listeners into meeting people from around the world uh, who we murder in situations, but they're scientists, <laughs> and we're learning different languages because they're talking in their native tongues, and the actors are from the places we claim they're from, and you're learning a little bit about history and and science and the scientific process because. My wife got a degree from Oxford in archaeological sciences, so it's all very wow. accurate. You're learning about geography, you're learning about history, and then, you know, scary monsters, kind of the, the narrative that ties it together and makes it interesting, but it's it's rather fun. That's cool. That's so cool. That I'm definitely, you're going to have to give me the links to, like, all of your shows and me stuff too. so we can put that in the description. Absolutely. Sure thing. Because I admittedly, last year, oh, I know what I was going to say. Jade, you said the uh, the... Her, everybody has 24,000 breaths in a day. So you, you take about, the average human takes approximately 24,000 breaths a day. Because it's crazy because I heard last year, I read a book about this college study they did that the average human has 50,000 thoughts a day. Yes. So does that mean we have twice as many thoughts as we do breath? Yeah. How That's can that be? Well, Are we I've having never, multiple thoughts at once? Have you ever been inside this thing? Let me <laughs> <laughs> terrifying place at times but that's pretty that's pretty that's what i was gonna say and got distracted by it. i was like is that possible yeah that's, uh... yeah that was the number i was gonna use but then i thought breaths are a little bit easier and i couldn't quite remember what the exact thought number was right. so i thought but yeah, yeah twice I mean, as a, many what a crazy thing well that's kind of what um you know, I read uh, I read that book and it's, you know, said uh, 50,000 thoughts a day and 70 percent of them are negative. But some of them are like, don't eat that mold. It'll kill you. Like, it's not, all you know, <laughs> it's important for survival. But uh, more than half of your thoughts you've already had. And again, some of those are like put the key in the ignition, right? Like they're relative. Mm -hmm. But some of them are just not serving you at all. So I set out and I read 28 books last year. I mean, all on Audible. Nice. My brother's a writer. He's like, you didn't read anything. I'm like, shut up, man. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I ingested the content and, uh, you know, and, but I'm, I'm now I'm kind of curious to branch out and listen to other content. Like I like the books mm -hmm. and stuff too, but I feel like I would benefit from, like, I've got really intrigued by your description of that podcast, Travis. That sounds super cool. Like traveling to different places. I mean, that's awesome. Thank you. And it's, again, The White Vault, and that's the website, and that's what you look up. And anywhere you want to find a podcast, you can stream it on the website or Spotify or Pandora, et cetera. That's awesome. So where Hey, Molly, I want to say, say one thing because I, because I love that you're bringing up, like, the idea of things being positive. I, I really – I'm getting a lot of people that are very, very down still. And they're like, you know, I don't really, I don't really want to do anything with my business. I'm just not interested or I don't want to sell anything or I don't want to, you know, kind of keep moving. And I mean, all of the things we're talking about are the ways that people can lift themselves up and um, get focused on something that brings them joy. Mm -hmm. um, but then all, if everyone can go out and reach out to people who are other business owners, even if you are, you yourself are not a business owner, but like check in with those people and ask them how they're feeling and are they going to move on and are, are they going to like pick themselves up and start thinking of some new things? Cause I can't tell you how many people I've talked to this past week who um, they just, they're overwhelmed with all the stuff that they're having to do, like close contracts down and refund money and, one one woman I spoke with who's a, a hair and makeup artist, she's just like, I just, I don't know. I don't even know if I want to try and sell anything right now or try to like pivot or any of it. And I'm just, yeah. I don't know. I just really want to bring people up and I, I want everyone to kind of come up with some ways of helping those people um, to see what what's possible. I mean, I've been trying to brainstorm with people and come up with ideas to help them and that sort of thing. I don't know what you guys are seeing, but it's, it, I'm seeing a lot of this. For sure. I think Jade has yeah. something to add here. Yeah, I was going to say one of the things is that, um, you know, along with losing a job, a lot of times what happens is a loss of purpose. And it's easy, I think, to get caught in either the economic aspect of it or the feeling of loss. 
um, which I think is an important process for people to go through. It's just not very familiar. And to do it, especially around these kinds of things, is unusual for people to mm. sort of like learn how to navigate and ride that wave a little bit, especially when they have a sense of probably there's more loss coming, right? People they know yeah. may, may get sick themselves, they may be worried about. Um, and that's, you know, that is going to happen pretty quickly. And so there are some people who sort of their reaction to this is going to be kind of to freeze or to rest or to try to retreat some. And I think, you know, where we cannot vilify that and actually allow that as a normal human response is important, but also to remind people that they weren't in business, hopefully, most of us, right? We're not in business um, just to make money, but we were in business because we found something useful to be of service about in the world. And that that is um, a really important thing is to like, so it's like staring at our own belly buttons about like, how do I figure my way out of this? Or how do I feel about this? It's like, okay, well now, you know, when, once I can sort of at least get my feet under me, mm. what do I still have to offer? Um, and I think it's one of the things that I know um, a lot of the acupuncturists and, and other holistic medical providers, you know, and, and, and so, you know, like acupuncturists have doctorate degrees in many cases. Um, you know, these are four and six year medical degree students. So these are people who can keep people out of the hospital front line um, via telemedicine if they can let go of the, of the catch about what it might mean to be marketing in a time like this, what it may mean to be reaching out. And so from my perspective, if we can sort of, even if we don't charge, right, to just stay connected to our, our people and say, you know, I, I know my hair is going to be crazy. So you're right. Like my hair is going to like. This is going to just keep going on like this. So if somebody <laughs> is willing to teach me to, and I'm going to be on a lot of podcasts and various things where my face is showing. So yeah. if somebody can teach me how to deal with that so that I don't, you know, fall, like I think we each have something to offer. I think Travis yeah. is already realizing like that his art matters in the world and it, and it makes a difference yeah. to people. Um, and, Definitely. you know, Molly being here doing this with the podcast and you helping other business owners. So I think you know, for us to be able to help each other remember what our original purpose was for our businesses mm -hmm. um, and our mission statements is a great time to revise your mission. Mm. Like, what are you doing in the world? Yeah, I love that. Before trying to strategize, like before the strategy application is, what am I doing here and for <clears throat> the sake of home? Like, what am I really about? Yeah, um, and, and I, I like that. Great... But I, you know, I will say this, I, I feeling, um, and I felt this pressure too, like I just, I see a lot of, of talk um, in groups and whatever, and it'll be sort of like, there's a pressure to do this in a, in a fast time, you know, timeline. And maybe that's, maybe that's partly my pressure on myself, but like, I'll see that it's like, oh, well, you know, yeah, go ahead and, and, and you can, you know, you can grieve about this for like a day, but then you got to get back in the, you know, on the horse or whatever. And I'm thinking, and they're not really saying that, but it's like the, what you're seeing out there is just like constant, oh, well, hey, this is how I'm serving my clients. And there's all this stuff going out and it's it happening so fast that you kind of feel like, well, Jesus, if I don't get my my myself in order here, I'm going to miss the boat or something. Do you see yeah. what I mean or do you understand where I'm going with this? So I think there's, there's there, like people aren't being given enough of that time, you know? I think it boils down to like, there's so much uncertainty, right? It's like, what is going to happen? Like, are, are we, you know, are we going to model China? Are we going to have less cases? Like Italy is already starting to come down. I think there's this sense of like, um, this isn't real. It's not really happening. And like tomorrow they're going to be like, okay, the virus cleared up. And like, that's not what's going to happen. And so I think a lot of that is kind of coming to terms with that. Right. It's like when someone in your life passes away, you know, like I lost a good friend of mine at while I was at Podfest. And um and it just seems so surreal. I just keep thinking I can call him, but I can't, right? Because it happened yeah. right before this. And so it doesn't seem real. Um, but it is, right? And I think there's just a lot of that. Cause I feel that too. Sometimes I look and I'm like, I better hurry up. I better figure yeah. this out. Like I have to save my staff. I have to pay my rent. And it's like, mm -hmm. yo, man, like calm down. Like everybody's in the same boat. Like I don't have to figure it out today. Like I'm just going to show up the best that I can today. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow I'll deal with what happens because every day, every week, every month that we're in this thing, the situation changes, you know, mm -hmm. um, the opportunities change, you know, the, 
constrictions change, the market changes. And I think, you know, I don't want to, you know, I'm always the one that says what I'm thinking, whether it's, whether people want to hear it or not. But I kind of think that some of these industries didn't need to be here. I mean, you know, and I love all my friends in the hospitality business, but we do not need 3,000 bars and restaurants in Washington, D.C. We don't. Not when we have Ward 7 and Ward 8, where in one of the wards in our city, there's one grocery store for 68,000 people. Yeah. Like, if you live on the other side of the river, there is not a hospital in Ward 7 or 8 where you can give birth. So you are going to have to drive for 30 minutes to get to the closest hospital to give birth, right? I think we need more hospitals and schools and things like that. Then we need more bars and pop-up bars and everything else. And it's not because I want my friends to lose their jobs, but I think we kind of need a retooling of like, what are we doing with our times? Right. You know, where, what industries have we created that maybe didn't need to exist at that level in the first place. Mm -hmm. And now I think everything just needs to be a lot more heart centric. Right. You know, yeah. Um, you know, you know, someone I, I know and care about, you know, deeply is a, you know, bartender and she's a sober bartender. And she's like, I don't know, I'm just sort of getting to the point where I'm like, is this really what I want to be doing? Like serving people who I know it's not serving them, you know, is this really, is this really my greater purpose? It's one thing to have a, a bar to go to, to celebrate. It's another thing when you're there every single day and you're seeing these decisions being made. And so I just think that like in all of this, there's going to be some industries that crumble like collection agencies, right? Mm. Like that's the most predatory thing ever. Like these giant companies write off this debt. Actually, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry, I'm a 15 year collector's agent slash uh, salesperson. Oh, well, there you go. So you don't think that industry will be affected? Uh, actually, I think you'll any day now you could see a bill go through that will be signed that will make the entire uh, consumer collection, uh, debt collection disappear overnight. Uh, there are only 6,000 remaining agencies out of the 12,000 that were around in 1990 or, oh, wow. or more. Or, or, Man, we keep losing Travis whenever he talks. It's, hmm. it's a con Travis, we lost you. Disappear. <laughs> Your Wi-Fi went out on you again. It seems no worries. It's only when I speak that it disappears. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> um, you said there was 12,000. Now there's six. No, but um, yeah, it, it's it's a declining industry. I, I think you'll see most of them shut down, and any that are left over won't be as strong in the consumer space. There's going to be have to be really heavy consolidation. But business-to-business -business collections, I know people often write that off when they think of debt collection. But that's a very important part of the industry because mm -hmm. there are some really not so great businesses out there that totally. uh, hurt some fairly decent businesses. So there is, there are spaces where collections are needed and agencies hopefully will survive. For sure. But I, I suspect the consumer industry will be more or less wiped out. For Interesting. Sure. Yeah, I think it's like a fine line, right, between the two because you know. Um, some of it is just criminal. I spent 13 years in real estate finance, so I like uh, read credit reports for a living and mm -hmm. dealt with all that kind of stuff. And it's just some of it is really criminal and some of it isn't right. Because there are businesses that are like delivering things and not getting paid or doing work for other businesses and not getting paid. I mean, there's a lot of that going around and they definitely need some protection because, you know, as a as a consumer, you almost have. Well, as a like in DC, for example, if you have a real estate lease, you have all kinds of protection and agencies you can go to and tenant laws. But if you have a commercial lease, like you're screwed, like you have no protection, you got to pay for an attorney to like do anything for you. And so if you're a struggling business and money is already tight and then you have to pay for these things or pay an attorney to go after the money that some other business owes you, I mean, it's it's devastating for sure. For mm. sure. So they're not all bad, but I'm happy to see the ones that are bad go away. Let me tell you. Um, Absolutely. I think there's just going to be a shift in like what we consume and how we consume it and how we move around the planet. You know, um, I know these uh, articles coming out about Venice and the dolphins. Uh, I know those aren't true. Those are not accurate. People are saying there's dolphins in the Venice canals and there's definitely not dolphins in the Venice canals. But the, but the planet is definitely catching a breather for sure. 
Yes. And I, and I think, you know, Melissa, some of it is just like, just let people heal, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, having had so many surgeries and having times when I'm in a lot of pain, some days I just say, not today, fam. Like I cancel my meetings and I spend mm -hmm. the day on the couch and I don't feel bad about it because at the end of the day, like I'm not an open heart surgeon. No one's going <laughs> to die. <laughs> right. I take a day off, you know? <laughs> And I think sometimes we have all this pressure on ourselves, like, no, you can't take yeah. a break. You can't do that. And it's like, that's not realistic and it's not sustainable at all. And yeah. I think that this break is kind of allowing people to realize that like, you know, maybe this system isn't working. Yeah, no. And I, I, I think that's true too. And I think I've, I've felt a lot of um, just, it's just been so weird for me because I'm very like, I'm a very, fo well, I'm not a very focused person sometimes, but I mean, when I get in a, in a zone and I really just want to work through something and get a project done, I'm so excited about it. I really don't like to step out of that. And I've had to do that so much lately. Like just, I get 15 minutes into something. Nope. Got to stop that. And I got to go do this thing and then stop that. And then I've got to go teach my daughter because <laughs> I'm the only one, you know, my husband and I are the only ones teaching her right now. So it's like, yeah, all that stuff. So they're, so the, the, your point is taken, like less pressure for everybody, you know, and we just have to do that for ourselves. And that's something that I need to work on. Cause that's, I'm all about putting too much pressure on myself. Right. I think that's just my way on your industry. <clears throat> What's that? Right? I think it also depends on your industry, right? Mm -hmm. Some of us don't, aren't going to be able to take a break and, and really to be fair, as much as we might like to, some of us want to take a break and really shouldn't be because we can be useful in ways that are really crucial and timely. Yes. Yes. And I think that's one of the, you know, for me, it's one of the important points about being able to use this physiological calming response, because mm -hmm. if we have to keep going for the service of others, then we have to be able to do it at not a detriment to ourselves. And some of us, even who aren't front lines, might need to because we need to feed our children and the stimulus package hasn't come through for us, right? So, I mean, there are people sort of across the board who may need to hustle right now, regardless of how they feel. And that is just a reality. So I think both ends of these things are true for the people who can take a break. Thank goodness. And hopefully, you know, you can regenerate so that you'll be there for the second wave when other people need your support. Right. Um, because the other, because people like on the front end of this are, are going to crash after two. Yeah, that's um, true. So I do think, you know, both are, <laughs> both are true. And one of the useful um, practices that I like to teach around this kind of thing is what's the phenomenon? Like, what's the reality? Because um, a lot of people are economically scared who don't need to be. Um, they just have never been poor, right? They're not used to knowing what it's like to have $100 in the bank instead of 5000 or 20000 or whatever it is that they're used to, right? They have a calibrated uh, amount that they get nervous about. Um, and it, so there's an unusual time for that. But so the phenomena is, am I going to start, like, do I have what I need? What are the stories that I'm building about, you know, am I going to survive this? Am I going to have what I need on the other end of this? Like, is that real or is that just a construct? Um, I need to keep my business alive. Is that real or is that, uh, you know, is that just an assumption? Mm -hmm. And if you can look at the phenomena of, uh, you know, have you made it thus far? You've, you figured it out all along. Yeah. Right? Even if you yeah, have, have the skill or whatever instead of, yeah, like. So we have the tools. Of it, it's like <laughs> coming back to like some <laughs> trust and faith in your own capacity to make yep. it through something. Um, but also like clear away any unnecessary structures about what you have to do, what you think you have to do. Just like see what they're founded upon, like see what those are. Are those so social constructs? Are they personal constructs? Are they family <laughs> constructs? Like, can you see what's true? Like in this moment, right in front of you. I mean, this is true even for personal health. Like, right? Some of us start to cough and feel a little tickle in our throat, and we think, "Oh my yeah. gosh, I've got, I've got the." It, yeah, that was me today. <laughs> today. Right? And right. so, but if you <clears throat> add that story to it. That doesn't help anything. It doesn't change anything. You're not no. going to test most places now anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, what can you do to help your body sort of just say, okay, well, let me keep observing. What's the reality? What's mm -hmm. the story? What's the reality? And can I keep coming back? And that in and of itself is a crucial thing for business, for personal health, for leadership. Absolutely. You, you know what else? Um, we all have seen uh, zombie movies and apocalyptic movies and all that. So we've got those skills too. So... <laughs> We're good. We're going to be good. It's, it's fine. 
<laughs> so that that brings me to a question. We used to talk about this on my last podcast for your zombie apocalypse game plan, <laughs> right? And so my game plan for the zombie apocalypse is to um, ride my bike down to the – well, first I got to pack a bag with, like, weed, whiskey, a couple of change of clothes, maybe some food. I don't know. Um, and batteries or something. I don't know. And then <laughs> ride my bike down to the waterfront and steal a boat. So be, apparently it's not super hard to hotwire a boat. And then I <laughs> made a friend who has a boat. I'm not going to steal hers though. Don't worry, Jen. But, um, <laughs> I did find out that there's only like five keys for almost every boat. Like that, like there's only so many end en- boat engines. And so there's like five. So like, if you have an opportunity to make friends with like a boat key maker, that would probably be very helpful in a zombie apocalypse. Interesting. Um, and then I would steal a boat and then I would head towards uh, Baltimore or the Inner Harbor and steal a cruise ship. Oh. And then head out. Same key? Open. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a different key. This might require <laughs> taking somebody hostage. We hadn't really gotten that far. We haven't gotten that far. Yeah, we haven't gotten all the there. Um, but yeah, hot wiring, I, I feel like it. hot wiring, knowing how to hot wire a boat is a pretty solid life skill. I agree. So yeah, my, I don't know if I have like a detailed plan like that, but I know, I know how I can serve people in that environment. Listen, I know how to make deodorant. I know how to make toothpaste. Like I can do this stuff. And so we're going to need to like stink yeah. left after a while, won't we? So sure. like, call me and I'll be part of the team. That's right. You got a cabin on the cruise ship. Wait, yeah. Oh, cool. Wait. Awesome. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring all my essential oils and I'll be ready to go. <laughs> That's, funny. <laughs> That's funny. Right on. So Travis, do you think that the podcast industry is going to change? Like, do you think that this is going to be like a new wave for podcasting or where, how do you feel about all that? I feel kind of like uh, a lot of people are expecting a bunch of new children to be born in about nine months, the Corona <laughs> children. Um, so I, I, I see the same sort of thing happening in podcasting. You're going to see a wave of mm. Corona podcasts, okay. not about, you know, anything to do with anything, but just right. new creators, people who had time on their hands who didn't before, who decided to dabble in it. Mm-hmm. And we will see a lot of really great creators come out of that uh, period yeah. of time um, and, and creative stories. Uh, ultimately, will they stay that way forever? Probably not. Some will, you know, fizzle and such. But I, I think we will see a, a surge of yeah. great stories and great content coming in the near future. If it, and it's already begun. I think so too. It's kind of exciting. I like that little pod babies. Pod babies, yeah. Little corona pod babies. Uh huh. Yeah. So cute. Well, you know, there's always a silver lining, right? Uh, I'm curious to see. I was thinking about it this morning because I think podcasting is the future of media. <laughs> you know, especially because I'm working with like former journalists and, you know, James Comey and Eric Holder were in my studio, not together, but like, you know, it's a different kind of wave, but it's really cool to be um, a fly on the wall for some of these conversations. And I think more and more people are realizing that they don't have to be uh, beholden to a network or censored by a network. Mm -hmm. I think, especially after this, I think a lot of people are going to be like, I'm out, I'm starting my own thing and I'm going to do Fauci for an hour. I'm going to, you know what I mean? take this into a deeper level of conversation. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, no Lawrence kidding. Fitburn did an audio drama called Bronzeville that is fantastic. It's historical fiction, takes place in Chicago, riveting story. He's one of the lead characters himself. Um, one of my friends was the, I guess, co-producer on it. I highly recommend it, Bronzeville. It's fantastic. That's awesome. I'll have to check that out for sure. Yeah, yeah we'll have to do some suggestions on sound healing and every link that we've talked about we'll have to compile that for sure and put it in the description for people and for ourselves because i'm not giving away my deodorant recipe yet yeah one day yeah i mean that's like my key that's my like ticket onto your boat so i'm not giving that one away there you go all right so uh before we go uh let's do one thing from each of you that people can do at home to take up some time. Did you guys think about this at all? That's an easy one. You can listen to my podcasts or other podcasts. Uh, <laughs> you can you can find all of mine. Uh, however, you listen to podcasts or online. The White Vault is the horror one. Vast Horizon is One Woman versus the Void of Space, and the Liberty Podcast, actually spelled out the Liberty Podcast, is the other one that I I create. That's a lot of fun. Awesome. Good. Awesome. How about you, Melissa? Do you have anything? 
<clears throat> well, um, I had just written a whole bunch of content about what you can do right now to start, you know, getting, you know, tightening up your brand, doing something new. Um, and so I don't really have like one specific thing out of that, but some of the things that I've been writing about are things like taking a lot of the content that you've already produced and start thinking about how you might create a course for your clients. Um, uh, looking at your website, making sure things are tight. Um, like what can you do to change your messaging? Um, you know, creating a lead magnet. Lots of people don't have that yet. So create a lead magnet, um, you know, look at uh, the images that you use across all of your social media, like all of your platforms, you know, what, what's your banner image look like in Twitter versus in Facebook and LinkedIn? And is there like a consistency with the, with the visuals and the, and the branding and all of that? So there's just a lot of that sort of thing. I think if we sat down now that we have the time, really think long and hard about what is the problem I solve? Because it might be different now. Um, think about who am I really serving? Because that also might be different. And then sit down and really like be intentional about how you show that. And if you need help on that, I think now's a great time to do that. Because you're going to set up your foundational structure so that when things do get back to some sense of normalcy, not the same normal, but whatever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when things get that, yeah, back to that point, then you're really gonna have like this level of confidence about what it, where you're going and your message and your mission and all that. And I swear, I think that that, that will be probably one of the best things to come out of this if people really have a, an understanding of why they're in business, like we talked about earlier. Like what, like what from your heart, why and who am I serving mm -hmm. and how can I serve them the best way? So not one thing, but like, let's pick one of those things and, and really dig into it. For sure. How about you, Jade? Well, I think I gave it a little bit earlier of the one about switching your thing over and checking in on your breath and, and seeing if you can recenter your body, even if it's just mm -hmm. taking a few long focused breaths. And they don't have to be, they don't have to be this like four or seven fancy, like don't get caught in, am I doing it right? Just can I notice my breathing pattern for three to five breaths? Just that simply in and of itself is a way to reset. Um, and I think I'll post a link. There's a wonderful uh, lung healing Qigong, which is great for resetting the nervous system, but also for specifically treating the meridians uh, that are involved with, with, with this illness and um, and just strengthening and supporting is really safe. Um, for business, you know, I think it's a great time to look at your decision-making skills and where you can brush up on um, what does my team culture look like? What are the decision-making things um, that I have in place already? Um, how flexible and agile is my organization? I know that's a, you know, kind of a buzzword, but really at a mindful level, can I take care of my people and take care of my organization in a holistic yeah. way? Practically speaking, um, refer everybody to telemedicine resources right now. Just do that. Find out, we'll post links, but yeah, please. Get, get, get thee to some telemedicine resources and some researched home care, self, self care stuff, um, which I'm posting on my Facebook pages and such, but I love that. Sorry, that was way more than one thing. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's awesome. Well, you know what? If you can do that, that'd be great because I, I myself have been trying to find better information about how to care for someone at this time because I know I know it's not a matter of of if we're gonna get sick, it's kind of when. And so I just want to know, can I use, you know, ibuprofen or not? Can I use elderberry or not? Do like not, I always No ibuprofen. Yeah. Acetamol okay. and paracetamol, right? No ibuprofen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Elderberry is fine for most people until you get to high fever stage. Mm. Mm. Yeah. See, these are things I don't know, but I like I'm I googling yeah. them and like I get half this answer and half that answer, and I don't even know. Yeah, I talked to my doctor yesterday because I've been having like blood pressure issues, and I thought I was dying with the flu and everything else, and. Um, so I was talking to her and I take a leave, not every day, but that's how I manage the pain that I deal with. And I told her I haven't been taking it because I can't take the, the NSAID. And she was like, no, that's not true. That's not accurate. You can totally take your leave. You're fine. Um, so it is confusing. It is confusing to know what's going on and what's mm -hmm. right. I think any kind of um, factual information is yeah. valuable. Um, so my tip system. is 
Um, learn how to cook something new, right? Like there's a website. I'll find the link because a friend of mine posted the other day, Amanda Moxham. She posted a link where you can put in whatever ingredients you have and then it spits recipes back at you. Cool. So you're not like, you know, I used to, there was a website called Barbug where you could put in whatever drinks you had, like you know, <laughs> whatever mixers and yes. stuff you had and it would spit out like drink recipes for you. But I guess I'm a little older and more mature now. So, uh, but you can put... <laughs> And then that way you're not like, well, I have to go to the store to get, you know, herbs, the province or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can just put what you have in there and it'll spit some things out. Um, last night I made meatless meatballs using eggplant. And yeah. it was so good. Really? Was so good. Yes. I awesome. know, right? Like who knew? You just you, you um, peel the eggplant and you dice it up and you put it in a pan, but with some water and you cover it. And you pan, you know, saute it or whatever, but with really not any oil. You put some garlic mm -hmm. in there and saute that. Then you drop the uh, the eggplant in, and then you add water and you cover it until it gets really mushy. So then, when it's all mushy and good, then you take it out and you mix it with Parmesan cheese and two um, beaten eggs. Um, I was gonna make a joke last night, like this in on the nightly news: an egg was severely beaten on the corner of Fifteenth and Oak. <laughs> Uh, it's like, what is it? Uh, the Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, <laughs> the egg and something else. Oh, breadcrumbs, Italian breadcrumbs. And you mix it all together. You put it in the fridge for 20 minutes and then you take it out and you form it into balls and put it in the oven for 25 minutes. And I got to tell you, that was like such a solid meal. There was no meat in it. So That's that good. was really rewarding. I felt really good about it. It was a yeah. nice attraction. It was like a nice finished product. So, you know, maybe bake something or cook something, you know, out of your normal repertoire, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not just going to eat tortillas and cheese and eggs. That's what I had was tortillas and cheese <laughs> for lunch. The two, the two things I always buy at the grocery yes. store is like tortillas or three, tortillas, cheese and eggs. And yes. I could live off of that. Uh-huh. Uh, knock on wood, but um, awesome. Well, thank you all for joining me. Um, at one point, we the broadcast dropped out, but I was able to start a new one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, take the videos down offline, throw them in an editing software and clean them up and then put them back online in about an hour. Um, wow. So that way, That's I fast. Know, um, I'm <laughs> you know, I'm a professional. What can I say? Um, <laughs> yes. Every once in a while. Well, I say that like I don't have to render this stuff. Travis is like, you're not going to get that. Render's going to take at least an hour. I at least know. an hour. Yeah. In my mind, it'll be done in an hour. But it'll be done before the end of the day because I'm just going to merge the two and then I'm going to cut the beginning out where it got all wonky. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we'll be back because it only dropped out for a second. I was able to retool the thing. So um, thank you guys for being on here. It was really a, a pleasure to talk to all of you. Um, and make sure you send me any links that you have, any resources, any way people can support you, all your podcasts, Travis, everything. Um, Melissa has some really awesome groups too on Facebook. Mm, yeah. She can link you to, or even if, you know, you're not interested, but you know, other people with businesses, they've been really, really helpful. And there's a lot of supportive people in those communities. And we're mm -hmm. starting to do things like collaborate on stuff. Me and Melissa are working on something where she can use her skill set, my skill set and someone else's, mm -hmm. and we can put something together to help people out. Um, and I, and that's just really exciting. It definitely makes me feel better about things. So I would encourage everybody to join those groups and share those links and, um, let's get some good information spreading around. That's not about whatever dumb thing Trump said today. Because <laughs> <laughs> we know awesome. it's coming, you know, yeah. it's just a matter of time. So, uh, mm -hmm. thank you all so, so much. I thank appreciate you. you. Thank you. Um, yes. I will. See you guys on the internet a little later. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.